Hello students welcome to the next lecture on the numerical analysis today we will describe the iterative process what is the basic concept behind that and we will look about the basic idea about this jacobi method myself dr harish gar you can simply follow my youtube channel for finding the various lectures on this numerical analysis so what we have discussed so far in our last lecture we have described the gauss elimination methods gauss jordan methods for solving the system of the equation ax is equal to b these methods are called as direct method however when you are solving these methods the size of this matrix a must be the restricted in here however if the size of the matrix is very large then the finding the solution of these two methods or the others that is called as the direct method is either the computational time is very large or it requires a lot of the memory to solve this problem so in order to overcome this it means that direct methods are not easily applicable in the many cases so for overcoming that a uh, indirect method is utilized what is the indirect method so the uh, indirect method instead of finding the solution like of ax is equal to b instead of finding this solution this is by using the direct method this is by direct method however instead of this we can start with the initial approximation called as the x not once we can start with the initial approximation we can find the new value x1 we can find the updated value and so on so that it will be converges to the desired point and if it is a convergent then it is convergent to the approximate closer solution in that case we will we will do the calculation until our desired accuracy met so it means when you are using the direct method the amount of the computation is a fix while in the iterative method it depend upon the amount of the accuracy that we desire what is the general form of the iterative method so how you can define the iterative method the general linear iterative method of the system of the equation is form of here where h and c are the are the matrices which are de depending upon the a and b this h is called as the iterative matrix which is dependent upon the matrix a C is the column matrix which are depending on the value of this B, and x n and x n plus one are the approximations at the nth and the n plus one equation. If you have any of the iterative methods, then your basic target is to identify this edge. So your target is to identify the edge. Once you know this edge, then we can call as the respective method is named as accordingly. and then we will see what whether this matrix is convergent or not remember the convergence of the any of the iterative matrix dependent upon the matrix h so that's why this is a very crucial when you are trying to find the value of this matrix h as n approaches infinity you can see as the n approaches infinity so this x of n will approximately goes to a zero then the solution will be the exact solution as a inverse b now in order to understand any of the iterative method we need the concept of the diagonal dominant firstly what is the diagonal dominant any of the matrix a is said to be the diagonal dominant if this condition hold what is the meaning of that if you have any of the matrix which the diagonal entries absolute value of the diagonal entries is must be greater than of others now since this inequality consists of the equality as well this definition used a uh, greater than or equality sign so that's why we call as the weak inequality or so since this is a definition of the diagonal dominant we call as a weak diagonal dominant on the other hand if this is strictly greater than sign then we call as the strictly diagonal dominant or in general when you call as the diagonal dominant you can use either of them remember that if the matrix is not the diagonal dominant so your target is to firstly convert into the diagonal dominant how you can convert into you can simply rearrange the equations so that it becomes the diagonal dominant for example check whether the matrix associated with this system is a diagonal dominant or not so what is the matrix associated with this so that's my 15 2 1 3 10 minus 2 minus 2 1 and plus 8 fine so you can write this system as ax is equal to b now when you can say this is the diagonal dominant look at the first diagonal entries the absolute value of the first diagonal entries must be greater than of this remaining 
and quiz is it true yes it is true similarly you can do for the second look at the diagonal entries of this second row which must be greater than of this two and the one now you can see that in all these cases in all these cases this conditions satisfied this condition satisfied whether it's a greater than or equality so what is the meaning of that once you can say therefore the matrix a is my diagonal dominant on the other hand if i consider this example then clearly say this is diagonal dominant or not look at the first diagonal entry is a one one is is it a greater than of two plus one clearly says that it is not greater than similarly if you look about the second one the second one is my one diagonal entry is it greater than of this again you can see it is not greater than look at the third one it's a four is greater than of one plus of this this satisfied but we need all the equations must be satisfied so what you can see so corresponding to this matrix a this is my not diagonal dominant so once it is a not a diagonal dominant then your target is to make them a diagonal dominant how you make them you can simply rearrange the equation how you can rearrange the equation that's very simple your target is to make the first element in the particular row should be the largest one so you can see if i interchange r2 and r1 so what will happen 3 is upside so now you can see 3 is greater than of 1 plus minus 1 fine similarly look at the second column look at the largest value in the second position so largest value is my here so i can change this which is my greater than so now we can make them by interchanging the equation now clearly say this is a diagonal dominant because mod of 3 absolute value of 3 is greater than of this that satisfied look at the second 2 is greater than of the 1 plus 1 again it satisfied and look at the third one it is also satisfied so which is a diagonal dominant now once it's a diagonal dominant then you can think about this jacobi method jacobi method is one of the iterative method for solving the approximate solution of this ax is equal to b in this method we can start with the initial approximation x not then we can find the updated value as x1 then we can find the updated value as x2 and so on until your desired accuracy what is the desired accuracy like say 10 to the power minus 3 up to the four decimal places and so on will met remember we will describe the two methods how you can solve this by using the jacobi method but make sure the first one should be the diagonal dominant so first method is if you have the system of the equations like of ax is equal to b make sure this matrix a must be of diagonal dominant firstly you have to check whether it's a diagonal dominant if yes then we can proceed if not then we can make we can make this by rearranging them then if it is a yes then we can find the value of the x1 from the first equation x2 from the second equation and so on how you can find the value of the x1 from the first equation you can see here how you can find that x1 i can write this as b1 minus a12 x2 and so on so this part this term this term i can return in this summation divided by 1 over a1 a2 similarly from the second equation we can find the value of the a2 which comes to be here clearly says that what is the value of the a2 i can take as a summation provided j is not equal to 2 similarly from the last equation we can find the value of the n x n now once you can find the value of the x i then we can start with the any initial approximation you can see it's a any initial approximation okay once you know the any initial approximation x1 x2 and so on i can substitute this value at here you will get the new value as x1 i can substitute this value in this equation you will get as a new value as a x2 and so on so after substituting this value in these given equations you will get as the updated value x1 then i can substitute this x1 again at this complete equation you will get the new updated value as a x2 
similarly i can substitute all these values in these uh, equations you will get as a updated value x2 and so on so you can move in this way until you will get the desired accuracy what is the second method is again you have ax is going to be make sure a must be my diagonal dominant fine we will see the couple of example uh, after the few slides so let a be the diagonal dominant so remember if a is the diagonal dominant then you can only start with this method then we can decompose a into the three matrix like if you have the matrix 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so what is my d d is my diagonal entry 1 5 7 the rest values are my zero how you can find this l l is my lower matrix what is the lower is is a strictly lower matrix what is the strictly lower matrix that means i can simply take diagonal as a zero and this as 4 9 8 the rest are my zero what is the u u is my strictly upper diagonal mat upper matrix so lo the lower values are my zero it is my 2 3 and 6 fine so l u and l d and u are the strictly lower upper and the diagonals so i can substitute this value at here we can see this equation then if i open this bracket i can take dx on the left hand side y on this this side can you find the value of the x from this case so i can simply take as a d inverse multiply on the both side you will get this now clearly says clearly says what is the journal iterative formula what is the journal iterative equation so as i told you earlier this is nothing but h x of n plus c so what is the coefficient of the x you can see this is my h this is a constant term this is called as the c and this h is called as iterative scheme and uh, called as the iterative matrix of the because this is a jacobi method so we call as this a jacobi iterative matrix now again once you get this iterative equation the procedure is similar we can start with the initial guess x not we can start with the initial guess x not i can substitute this value at here we can get as a x1 i can substitute this value of x1 again at here you will get x2 and so now since we will get as a iterative matrix you will get here but the question arises is when it will be the convergent so condition is very simple whether a is my diagonal matrix if i if i have the system ax is going to be then you have to firstly check whether a is my diagonal matrix or not if it is a diagonal matrix then the scheme that is the iterative scheme of jacobi method is convergent for any initial approximation what is the meaning of the any initial approximation you can start with the x1 0 and so on you may start with the initial approximation at say 0 1 minus 1 up say 0 you may start with the initial approximation as say 0.5 0.8 minus 0.3 and so on because it is for the any initial approximation make sure it must be the diagonal dominant on the other hand if it is not a diagonal dominant then we can find the spectral radius of the matrix h iterative matrix h so you all know spectral radius is denoted by rho of h what is the definition of the spectral radius it is nothing but my maximum of eigens value of the matrix h we can form a matrix h we can form a matrix h of this square matrix then we can find the eigen values take the absolute eigen values and the maximum if it is a less than 1 then this method is convergent otherwise not for example firstly you have to check whether this matrix that is a ax is equal to b is convergent or not so as i told you there are the two methods firstly check whether it's a diagonal dominant or not so you can see that the first one is a 2 is greater than of 3 plus mod of 1 which is not satisfied it means this is not a diagonal dominant it is not diagonal dominant so can you make this as a diagonal dominant can you rearrange the equations look at that if i look at the first column the largest value is 3 if i make this as the first equation of here 
is it a diagonal dominant again you can see this is not diagonal dominant fine so clearly say if i interchange with the help of here again one is not greater than two plus four so it means you are unable to make this as a diagonal dominant so it means we are fall under this category matrix a is not diagonal dominant fine so clearly say this is not diagonal dominant again you can never if you rearrange the equation then is it a diagonal dominant again it is not a diagonal dominant so hence we need to compute the spectral radius of this matrix here now if you have the matrix a can you write this matrix from this matrix a this is a ax is equal to b what is the diagonal entries 2 2 and 2 this is my d what is the l plus u that is the you have to replace the diagonal entries here then you have to find the d of inverse there is no need to find the adjoint the diagonal inverse is the reciprocal of this 1 over 2 1 over 2 1 over 2 rest values are my 0 fine now this is my d inverse then you have to find the value of the h minus d inverse l plus u how you can multiply this matrix so as you know how you can multiply the two matrix but i tell you the simplest way you can simply multiply the first row with the first row so what is that it's a zero it's a zero it's a zero the first value will be zero and so on so once you can multiply here you can see it's a three into one by two it's a one by five 1 into 1 by 2 is a 1 by 2 this because of this negative i have written here similarly you can multiply this value with this line this is a 3 by 2 0 and so on so you can simply multiply them now you have to find the eigen value of this matrix so for that you have to start from here what is the h h is my here i is my 3 cross 3 matrix 1 1 1 rest values are 0 now if you subtract them you will get as this expression now you can find the determinant of this it is lambda square minus 1 plus 1.5 of 1.5 minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 of 1.5 minus 0 0.5 lambda is 0 now if you open this bracket you will get this expression now this is the cubic equation now you can solve this by using the calculator fine or you can use either as a bisection method you can use either as a regular falsy method secant method or you can use as a newton raphson method for finding the root of the equation so after finding the calculator i can get this value now what is the maximum value of this you can see what is the maximum value in the terms of this 0 0.565 so therefore the spectral radius is denoted by rho of the matrix h so what is the row of the h it is 2.0565 which is greater than 1 which is not less than 1 hence this jacobi method will not converge on this given system of the equation it means you can start with the any of the initial guess it will not be converged to the desired point so this is the basic idea about this jacobi method make sure you have to learn about the concept of the diagonal dominant and the spectral radius in order to understand this Jacobi method. We will see the next lecture on the various examples of the Jacobi methods in the detail. Till then, you can simply like, share and comment on my video. Best of luck students. Happy learning.